There's a chapter in my book, The Colorist Ten Commandments, called Choose the Right Tool. And this commandment is really all about having the discipline to focus on one thing at a time, using one tool at a time, and most importantly, to make sure that the tool you are using is the ideal one for whatever task you're trying to accomplish. Makes sense, right? But what if that's not the only way to think about color grading? What if there's another way that we could work our way through the process of making our adjustments when we're grading, where we still have some structure and we still have some parameters in place, but it's a bit more intuitive and a bit more free form in terms of the way we go about getting our end result. That's what I wanna talk about today and that's what we're gonna look at here inside of Resolve. So if we take a look at what I've got going on right now, I have a couple shots that I've pulled in and set up color management for. And you'll notice I don't have my normal template node graph here that you might see in some of my other videos because today we're gonna to be approaching things a little bit differently. My template node graph is actually a great example of the idea of choosing the right tool in action because if you remember the first two nodes in my template node graph, they are exposure and ratio. And the premise behind these two nodes is that I'm gonna go into node number one I'm going to make my exposure adjustment using a single tool. Then I'm going to move on and make my contrast ratio adjustment also using a single tool. Today, I want to try lumping these things all into one bucket and saying, hey, this is just my primary tonal adjustments. They're going to incorporate exposure. They're going to incorporate contrast. And my only real goal is going to be to make the image look better to my eye than it did before I made these adjustments. So let's give this a try. I'm going to reset everything here and I'm going to create a single node and just call it prime like so. And if I am operating in this sort of like, okay, everything is going to happen inside of this node type of mode. And the other sort of tweak that we're going to make here today is I'm not going to be using a single tool. I'm going to be using a couple of tools. Specifically, I'm going to allow myself to operate in between lift, gamma, and gain and freely flow in between those. Okay. So if we look at this shot, what needs to happen? I don't see a huge need for exposure to go way up or way down. I don't see like contrast ratio needing to move and get way softer or way harder. But what I do see is some highlights that I would like to pull in specifically. So here's an example of how I might take this more sort of holistic blended primaries approach with my color grades. I'm gonna focus in on those primaries. That's the first thing that caught my eye here. And for a moment, I'm gonna pretend that there's nothing else in this image that I need to worry about at all. And I'm just going to adjust my gain to try to get those primaries feeling good or to try to get those highlights feeling good, I should say. So I'm gonna take this gain wheel, turn it to the left. And you can see that's doing the job. That's bringing in that practical back there in the background. That's pulling in that uh, kind of hot spot on my subject's cheek. Now, of course, we're doing lots of other things to the image as well, but this is where this idea of blended adjustments comes into play because I'm now gonna take my gamma and turn it to the right and try to recover kind of some of that brightness or exposure, whatever you wanna call it but while maintaining that softer feeling in the highlights. That's starting to get somewhere interesting. By the way, I'm using a control surface, which I think really helps with uh, trying out this type of workflow. It's not something you have to have, but it definitely helps because you can make more than one adjustment simultaneously. And as I'm now working my gain and my gamma against each other and getting somewhere interesting, I'm noticing that the gamma move I'm making is starting to affect my shadows and maybe make them feel a little bit thinner than they were before. So I'm now gonna go down to my lift and drop that down a little bit and continue to play my gamma to the right and sweeten my gain as well. Now, if I addition this off and on, that's starting to get in the direction that I wanted to see things go. But there's something else interesting happening here with the colors in the image. Do you feel how the colors are getting significantly lower? The saturation is really dropping uh, as a result, kind of a byproduct of what I'm doing here in this node. This right here is honestly one of the reasons why I have sort of foregone this type of more intuitive multi-adjustment approach when I'm grading is when you're working your primaries against each other in this way, it's really easy for saturation to go up or down for color to feel like it's changed, for color to indeed change as a byproduct of the adjustment. And at that point, you could then go in and add a, another tool to the mix, maybe the saturation knob. As you might know, I don't love the saturation up, so that's not the most appealing option. I also don't want this to turn into a free-for-all kitchen sink exercise where anything goes and I'm allowed to throw any tool at the problem because that's the exact thing that we are trying to avoid in the first place. So I'm going to show you an alternative that I've really been liking using 
ever since the feature came out in Resolve 18.5. If I right click on this node and I go to my composite mode and I set it to luminosity, watch what happens here. All of a sudden, the color that I originally had is kind of restored to the image and I'm now just getting the adjustment that I wanted. And in fact, it's actually easier for me to evaluate how things are feeling tonally. To me, I feel like I might've taken that gamma a little bit far and I wanna do something more like this. I'm dropping that gamma back to the left a bit and turning my gain just a bit further down to the left as well. And now you can see that I'm starting to kind of soften things out up there in the high end and get the result I was originally after of kind of softening things out in the highlights. Now, could I have gotten this with just a straight up contrast pivot? Not this exact result, but maybe something close. But I also have a different relationship with my tools and a different relationship with this image as a result of trying out this workflow. So this is one that I really encourage you to audition, even if you end up deciding it's not for you and you want to stick with one tool at a time, one ideal tool at a time, one task at a time. Okay, let's take a look at another shot. Let's take a look at shot number two here, where I have a sort of itch to soften things out in the low end a little bit more or to retain detail or to hang on to things as long as I possibly can down there in the low end. So what you're going to find with this sort of blended primaries approach is that you need a catalyst. You need something to light the fuse to start the process. And then you're just going to react to what you're doing. So in this case, I'm going to say, I'd like to see as much as I possibly can down there in the low end. So I'm just going to take my lift and turn it to the right. And I'm going to pretend as I did in shot number one, like that's the only thing I got to worry about right now. So as I turn this to the right, I'm starting to see some of that detail that I would like to in the low end. And now I just need to make some compensations so that the overall image doesn't feel like it has been lifted and flattened out and uh, changed in an undesirable way from the original. So I'm going to play once again, my gamma against that lift, this time turning to the gamma to the left to try to get a little bit more weight back into the image. As I start to do that, the high end is starting to feel sort of flattened out as well. So I'm going to go over to my gain and stretch that out. And now I'm just working all three against each other, trying to get those kind of creamier shadows but maintain the overall feeling of the image, at least the portions of the image that I liked before I started making my adjustments. And I'm going to go off and then on and say, that's feeling pretty good. Maybe I went a little too far on those highlights. Something else that you can do if you feel like, wow, I've really gotten a great thing. It's just a hair too much of it. You could, of course, back things off in your primaries, or you could say, keep everything as it is. And I'm going to go over to my key output tab over here or my key tab and just set the gain to say a 0.5. Now I'm getting 50% of this original adjustment. And this is of course becoming like a very nuanced manipulation, but that's part of the value prop of this blended primaries type of approach is that you can make little nuanced adjustments, but as long as they're moving the image in a positive direction, then that's a great thing, right? So that's another option you have at your disposal is to dial back your key output gain. If you feel like you've landed somewhere good, it's just a little too far in that direction. In my case, I'm gonna leave the key output gain pretty much up at 100. I think it was looking pretty good right there. And I could also use that same composite mode trick that we used in shot number one. In this one, I'm not noticing it quite so much, so I can audition it off and on, but I don't think it necessarily needs it here. Let's take a look at another shot. Shot number three. My sort of uh, kickoff or my catalyst for this one is going to be, let's bring the gain in a little bit. Let's bring those highlights in a little bit, kind of similar to what we had in shot number one. I'm just going to take my gain, turn it to the left, take my gamma, turn it to the right and just look at trying to get that sky a little bit closer to level with my subject here. Of course, it would not feel quite right if those things had the exact same value, but there's nothing wrong with bringing them in a little bit closer together. Okay. Again, I'm going to go on and off as I go along here and just sort of audition how things are feeling as I go on and off. That's feeling really nice. Pretty subtle adjustment, but definitely scratching the itch that I originally had when I looked at this image. Okay. Let's go to shot number four. Same kind of deal here. I want to see more into these shadows and just kind of reshape the tonality of this image overall. So let's open up those shadows, drop that gamma down, grab that gain, twist it up. And now I'm just flowing and moving fluidly between lift, gamma, and gain to try to get a better outcome than I had when I started. Something like that. Okay. Now, this is another one where I feel like that composite mode could really benefit. So I'm going to turn my composite mode to luminosity once again. And you can see 
we've kind of remapped the tonality of this image in a pleasing way. Okay. Now here, as with the other shots, like I mentioned before, it's not that you could never get this any other way, but you got there via a different path that still had some structure, still had some principles, still had some rules to it. It's not like you're saying, Hey, any tool goes, let's just throw things at the wall until uh, something sticks. You're still Im imposing some structure on your process, but it's a bit more fluid. You've got a bit more freedom of movement than in the typical workflow that I would prescribe, a typical workflow that I would use when I'm grading. That can be a very freeing thing that can change your relationship with the image that can help you find new looks or new ways of working on your image that maybe you hadn't thought about before. And here's the other thing it can do for you. This is what I want to leave you with. If I go over here to shot number five to this compound clip, this compound clip is just a grayscale ramp that I generated over in the edit page. You could do that by going to edit and drop a grayscale ramp into the timeline and then just make sure that you right click it and say new compound clip. That way it'll show up over here in the color page. And if we look at this compound clip and I'm now gonna go over to my timeline level of my node graph and turn off my look and my output transform temporarily, I can audition the net curve of my adjustments on this grayscale ramp. And in doing so, start to get a sense for what is the net of what I did in all those scenarios and start to get an intuitive sense for what needs to happen in net when I look at a shot and I say, hey, the highlights need to roll in a little bit. What is the shape of that curve that I'm ultimately gonna need to draw? Well, if I go over here to my compound clip and I pull up a waveform, I can paste that grade right on here and you can see the net curve of my operation on shot number one or shot number two or shot number three or shot number four. And this is really helpful for you to start to shape a sort of like put together idea of how you arrived at this result. So instead of thinking about, oh yeah, that one time on uh, the shot of, uh, you know, like the uh, city exterior, I had to bring out my lift so, so far and my gamma down a certain distance and my gain up a certain distance. You can just say, well, I ended up with a curve where I had some stretched out highlights and I rolled off my low end and let my blacks kind of die above zero. Okay. So understanding the net curve of your operation, in my opinion, is worth this exercise in and of itself. As you might've heard me say before, I love curves. I really believe in so many ways, curves are the native language of color grading. And if we can understand the net curve of an operation, we're really starting to understand that operation, whether it's technical or creative or some combination of those things. So I hope you enjoyed exploring this sort of different lens that we can put on our process. I think it's really fun from time to time to shake things up, try things in a bit of a different way without abandoning the things that work for us. I know in for uh, uh, my own practice, for example, that having some structure and not saying, hey, I'm going to make any adjustments in any order simultaneously using any tools that appeal and then countering those adjustments with any other tools. I know that that's chaos. I know that that is not a prescription for me to consistently and efficiently get great looking images. However, that doesn't mean that I can't change up that playbook, that script, that parameter that I put on my process. And by doing so, you can arrive at potentially a different way of seeing your images, a different way of grading your images, and a different way of understanding your images.